Great to be here. Um, we're going to talk today about multiple time frame analysis and the meaning of fractals. Before I get going, I, I just want to say uh, hello to Jeff. It was great to have you on. I haven't heard your voice in quite a while. We haven't done a presentation together in quite some time, so it's great to have to be here uh, following you there. All right, so I'm going to kind of demonstrate today what multiple time frame analysis is all about and why it works. A lot of people that are clients and, and students get a little confused about how a trading system can work across different time frames. And today we're gonna take a look and see why that works. And a lot of it has to do with the fractal symmetry of the market. So it's gonna be a kind of a fun thing. And I also too wanna invite everybody to our website. We got a ton of information there, so feel free to join us. Uh, we're not gonna be selling anything today, all right? That's kind of not like what we do. We like to have people kind of get to know us uh, and then find the benefit of what they can do with this. So drop by our website, get on our emailing list, and you'll kind of see what we're all about. We've been doing this, uh, helping traders since 1998. I started trading the markets in uh, about 85. I've uh, been on Wall Street. I now live in San Diego, much better out here on San Diego. And we've been doing a lot of traders expos. I've been doing the traders challenge. I run uh, day trading rooms for futures. And uh, we just do a lot in the equities as well as futures. So we're kind of in concentrated in that area. We're big on risk control. We have also Forex traders and of course, um, you know, getting into Bitcoin as well. Everybody seems to be going there these days. All right, so uh, that's kind of our, our deal here. We always preach risk control. We always want you to use risk control. So what I wanted to give you today is actually a free article that I'd written in stocks and commodities that has some formulas in it that people find really helpful in calculating their trade size. We're big on risk and reward and we're big on calculating your trade size, which is also known as position size. So that link should be in the chat area now and you can get that by clicking on the link and then you'll join our email list as well. So kills two birds with one stone. If, you're, if you don't know anything about us, another great place to go is our books. I have uh, several books on Amazon as well as all the major bookstores. All our books, all my books have been uh, published by major publishers like Wiley or McGraw-Hill. I'm working on another one that'll be out next year as well. But uh, you may wanna go there if you don't know anything about us, read about risk control, which I think is a vital part of being really good in trading the markets. Also too, we want you to realize that there's risks involved in trading. There's nothing guaranteed. Everything is probabilities in trading. We always try to go and put the probabilities on our side. That's what being successful in the markets is. We don't win every trade, nobody does, but we try to keep our losers as small as possible and let, of course, the winners run. Sometimes that can be a challenge, but it is the gold you need to do as a trader. Also, too, before actually, if we look at some stocks today, because we are going to look at some live markets, if there's something that you think you may like, run it by either your financial advisor, accountant, or attorney, just to make sure they're suitable for you, because you, we, of course, do not know your personal situation. And they do. All right, so let's jump into the content here. All right, first of all, I got a bunch of questions here. Anybody want to throw out something? What is technical analysis to you? All right, and um, I don't know if I can see any answers, so kind of just answer that on your own. And is it better than fundamental analysis? All right, what do you think? There's two schools of thought there's fundamentals and there's technicals. And a lot of people like to combine the two, a lot of people tend to segregate into fundamental or technical. So I'm gonna make a case for technical analysis today, especially if you're a short-term trader or an active trader. And the reason is, is because technical traders like myself believe that everything about a market is represented in its price. So it really represents the truth of the market. It's the price that basically I call the king of the market or queen of the market if you want to. And everything else, a forecast, all that kind of good stuff is, is a forecast but price is real. So I think you have to keep that in mind when you focus on technical analysis. Also to the patterns or the history that price is formed, and we see those on charts, is also a reality of the marketplace. So you have price, price patterns of the history, 
that represent the truth of the market. Now there's volume and things like that, and those are also truths of the market. But for the most part, I wanna focus on price because that's gonna le really lead us to where we wanna talk about how a trading system works across all time frames. All right, so does price represent all information? Yes, all right, the smart money, the dumb money, everything is represented in price. Therefore, price, as I say, is an absolute truth of the market, and that's important, okay? Really important when we tar tar start talking about how to analyze different time frames. All right, now, price patterns, which is the history of price, form support and resistance levels in the marketplace. I think we all know what those are, what they look like. You can have support resistance levels on both uptrends and downtrends. Uh, fractals are also uh, in the market. So what's a fractal? I mean, think about that. A good definition for a fractal is basically a change in behavior. All right, so there's fractals in the market. There's human fractals, change of behavior of humans, uh, change of, fra of fractals in a riverbed as it meanders down the slope. Generally with fractals, they are representative of a change in behavior. And that change of behavior usually flows in the path of least resistance. So that's kind of something to keep in mind there. So as a technical trader, when we look at these prices, we look at basically prices in bull markets and bear markets in these patterns. And we formulate a direction that we want to trade in based on this information. So we can trade in both bull and bear markets, which is actually kind of really a, a great thing for traders because in a recession, we have opportunities. In a bull market like we've been in so far, we have opportunities. So there's opportunities no matter what the market is doing. And if you compare that with other forms or careers, not so much, okay? For example, a retail business in a recession usually suffers, but we have the uh, chance to make money in both good and bad markets. All right, so let's dive into a little bit more on the fractal situation and the symmetry. So fractals, as I basically explained before, are patterns that represent a different uh, change in behavior, physical or temporal. They appear in many natural systems like as coastlines, rivers, and plants, etc. Now, since a stock market is, is a system that arises from a natural human behavior, fractals are part of its price history as well. And since human behavior is repetitive, fractals should help us to calculate the probabilities of future market moves, meaning that in, when you have a change in behavior, it usually goes on for a little bit of time. And from a statistical standpoint, if you look at the changes in behavior amongst fractals, you'll get an average of how long that moves apart. People in markets usually take the path, like I said, of least resistance, and therefore when they hit a fractal, they change until they hit another one, and then they change again. We see the fractal changes represented as price patterns we use for trading system design. All right, market symmetry. So we talked a little bit about fractals, now we wanna to jump to market sym symmetry. What is it, how can it help us? Best way to explain this is look at a chart. Let me ask you, what market is this and what time frame is it? Now you see without the X and Y axis on this chart telling us the price or telling us the date, you have no idea what time frame this is. You don't even know what market it is. And yet that, could, that particular market pattern we've seen across a variety of different markets at one time or another? The answer is that stock symbol SSI, Stage Stores Inc. It's a daily chart. Let's take a look at another one. What time frame is this? Tough to tell. This is the ES market, S&P E-mini contract on a two-minute chart. What time frame is this? Impossible to tell. This happens to be light crude, futures market. That's a daily chart. And how about this one? So I think you're getting the kind of, the idea is that, hmm, these patterns could actually apply to any market in any time frame. That one's applied materials on a weekly chart. All right, so why can't we tell what market and time frame these charts represent? And the answer is market symmetry. All charts exhibit price patterns that repeat and look similar. 
Now, what's interesting, if you look up the textbook answer of what market symmetry is, it's similar price patterns occurring on all time frames and all markets. Next question is how can market symmetry help us? If we focus on price when designing a trading approach or system, market symmetry allows us to use that same system across all time frames. Now, I can't tell you how many times people will ask me, does your trading approach work on all time frames and all markets? And I answer yes. And the reason now is because of market symmetry. You can certainly see that because we're analyzing price patterns. And those price patterns are represented on all time frames and all markets. And this even allows us to analyze the same market using the same trading system on multiple time frames to help determine the short term, intermediate term, and long term trend of that same market. Now we're going to look at some live charts in just a little bit, and you're going to see me use multiple time frame analysis. And again, thanks to market symmetry, we can do that. And basically what we're doing is we're applying the same trading approach on the same market, but on different time frames. And those time frames will give you give me the momentum on the short term, the momentum on the intermediate term, and the momentum on the longer term. And so when we make our trading decisions, we try to make it so the momentum on the three time frames are going in our direction. That's the benefit of multiple time frame analysis. All right, and again, we can thank market symmetry for that. All right, now, in terms of fractals in the market, okay, uh, are there more than one and how can they help us? Well, as we said, market fractals indicate a change in behavior and they also can represent changes in mass trading, trading behavior uh, depending on certain support and resistance areas that are created in the market. And these are usually created as pivot points as well, all right? So you can have multiple, multiple market fractals, okay, even looking on one chart or looking across a broad spectrum of many time frames. So market fractals, the reason why they're important is they can actually um, create trading opportunities because they mark these resistance levels, reversals and support levels on charts. We use them to set our stops. We use them to enter the market and I created the entire applied reality trading system around the use of them. And here's what they look like in a chart. So you have certain pivot points as you can see here that are down when the behavior changes and then the behavior returns. Behavior changes, returns, changes, behavior returns. So these are all technically fractals. And the ones that are actually hit with an arrow up here, usually what we do is we look at five price bars and we wanna have two price bars preceding and two after the main pivot in order to deviate or name that an actual fractal, whether it's bullish or bearish. So basically, um, we have something called ARC pyramids on our trading system that looks for those. All right, so I can't see any questions here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pass on this, and let's go right to, let's take a look at some live charts right now. So let me just come out of here for a minute, and you should now see in front of you um, my charts, and this is on NinjaTrader and we have our trading system built into the NinjaTrader charting platform. And as you can see, this happens to be a stock TLRY, but I could look up any stock and any time frame. But the idea is on this, this is a 60 minute time frame on the far left, and this would be for position trading. You're not gonna be day trading with these time frames. I'll show you what we use for that in just a moment. So this would be your short term, chart, this would be your daily chart or your intermediate, and this is your weekly chart or a longer term view of a market. And this happens to be a stock we're looking at. So when we look at these things, we're looking at some of our indicators below that tell us a little bit about momentum. And notice we have these pyramids on the different time frames, all within fractals of the market. So our system is looking at price patterns and fractals forming in the market. 
It also takes a look at how fast or the momentum that was involved in creating that price pattern. And momentum is not this, quite the same as price ends really on whether uh, really the relationship between buyers and sellers. So you, for example, um, could have buyers and no sellers and the momentum is gonna be extremely bullish, but you may not have many of them or you may have a lot of them. So volume, while it's important, it's not what's really causing necessarily the momentum. So the momentum is caused by the relationship of buyers to sellers and vice versa. So what we do is we take a look at some of this uh, information. And when I look at this, my primary time frame is always my chart in the center. So this is the daily chart here. And what you wanna take away from this is the same trading system that is on this chart is on this and this. And again, we can thank market symmetry for allowing us to apply the same trading approach on all time frames. If for some reason, your trading approach that you're using doesn't allow that, then you're not using price patterns, which are available on all time frames for the final analysis of that particular system. In our case, price patterns are everything and the momentum going in and creating it, which is what these indicators are telling us at the bottom. So when we take a look at a market like this, we've seen it made a high up here on tremendous momentum and came back down here this low held and now it's starting to move up and if you can see here we had a small fractal beginning here but the momentum hasn't quite gotten bullish here so from our trading standpoint we would wait a little while until that momentum got more bullish on the daily time frame and we look quickly at the 60 minute and we have green green and a green pyramid so everything looks good on this time frame we just need to wait a little while longer for this to roll over for a particular long position. We look at the weekly, we've got green and green here, so everything looks good, but we're kind of going again to go long here. So we gotta wait for that daily chart to turn over in our, our actual um, target zone all right, can be based on whether you use Elliott Wave or whether you use uh, something that we use uh, for our risk to reward and profit target zones like FIBS and so forth. All right, but the point is here is no matter what market you're looking at, all right, your trading system should be able to give you an analysis on the short term, intermediate, and long term approach before you take the trade. Now, if we look at futures, for example, let's just go down quickly to the, the uh, day trading. Uh, screens here. So here happens to be the Dow 30, okay, e mini, and this is the YM contract. But again, um, because we're analyzing price patterns, the same trading approach can be used on all time frames. But on the day trading, for example, very short term, we can use a 10 second over here for quick momentum, a one minute here, and we use a five minute here. OK, and so that's how we break it down on intraday time frames. Now, if one minute. It is too too short for you. You can, you know, move that up to two minutes or five minutes. Kind of important five time frames apart is a good general rule. And so, for example, you know, if we look at the E-mini on the micro, we've got our one minute in the middle, our five minute on the right, and our 10 second, okay, on the left. And we've got bearish momentum currently heading down, so you don't want to take a long position. And right now, we've got a little bit of bullish momentum, but pretty much drifting sideways on the short term. And our longer term is a little bearish as well. So if anything, you're gonna consider a bearish trade here, not a bull.
accomplish one. But by looking at all three time frames, it helps us kind of get a good snapshot in the long-term time frame, but the momentum is going in your direction on your primary and your um, shorter term time frame. So this is something that you know may, may be able to help some of you out there that you know are using a trading system, all right, on one time frame, and you know have gone in and you get and you're getting stopped out a lot. Go in and try three time frames, and see if those additional time frames are better for your timing. Okay, I think you'll find that it, that it will help you a lot. All right, and don't forget to use risk control as well. All right, so I'd love to open it up to questions. Um, Dave, how do you want to handle that? Because I don't see any questions here. Not sure how, how we can do that. Well, Ben, I'm going to jump in. All right, excellent. All right. Okay, so my mic is good. Okay, all right. Um, let's see what else we got here. All right, here's a question. Okay, I got it. Dave, good. I, I got it. Thank you. Is it better to use time frames with fractals, i.e., minutes, second days versus ticks? Do you lose anything with tick data versus time based action? Great question. We kind of focus on time based. Um, we have some traders that use our approach on ticks, and you can go down to ticks. There's nothing wrong with ticks. You just don't want to go down to where you see, um, you know, dots on your chart. You want to have at least some distinguishable price bars. And, you know, you can, I've got uh, open, high, low, and close price bars on my charts here, but, you know, you could use um, candlesticks if you want to, but you just want to be able to see. A little bit of the price bar and not just that dot okay I think that's the best way to approach that okay now fractals um Rajesh is asking me can you explain fractals again think of fractals as, as changes in behavior so if we open up this chart here for example all right fractals occur anytime the market turns around either up or down these are all fractals in the market Now, what our system uh, tries to do is it tries to look at the, the momentum in these patterns. So it usually forms on fractals with the right type of momentum we're looking for, for the kind of trades we like to do. But all these areas where you see the market reverse are all fractals. So think of fractals as a change in behavior, okay? Now, what we do is, um, when we, when we, for example, look at this pyramid here, or this triangle, I'll call it here, forming right here in blue. So you see how this one's blue and this one's red? This is not going to change color until prices get below the point of the pyramid. Because right now, it's what we call an unconfirmed pyramid or trading entry signal, because we want to wait for prices to go below the bottom of it before we would ever consider a trade, because if you think about the definition of a, of a downtrend, it's what, lower lows and lower highs. So you have a low one here, okay? You have a high one here, high two, and, a, and this would be a low two once it goes below the apex. So we're not trading every turn in the market. We want that turn to be qualified with follow through. And that's what the, that particular pyramid does for us, okay? So pivot points um, are part of the fractal system, but we also wait for uh, a little bit more in terms of momentum and the definition of a trend to be in place before actually taking the new trade off the most recent fractal. Good questions, excellent. Here's a question we get a lot, is your system automated? All right, so we have voice technology in the system, which kind of tells us when to go in and when to go out. But honestly, um, what you want to do is you do, we don't use automated systems per se, 100%. A, they don't work over the long term and they don't work in every market. Also, too, when you're using multiple time frames like we do, okay, to program that situation is a little bit difficult in terms of the kinds of things we look at in the market. For example, there also, there's also the uh, uh, ability for you to scale out of markets. So for example, you know, if a market moves in your favor and it happens to move uh, 10 price bars in a row, well, you know you're starting to get into a period where statistically you're going to get some type of pullback. 
All right, that might be an excellent place to scale out of the market, depending on you know your short-term time frame and your target range and where that is and so forth. But those decisions, okay, will come um, basically out of nowhere, and it depends on what time frame. Okay, so very tough on that. Okay, this is a good question too. Do you need all three time frames to go in the same direction before placing the trade? Um, not always. Um, we do on the smaller time frames. On the larger time frame, for example, what we're looking at is basically we kind of want the momentum to be a little bit in our direction, obviously. We want to make sure we're not going against the longer time frame but we may not get an entry early enough if we wait on the longer time frame. But we wanna make sure we're going in the direction of the longer time frame. So if the direction of the longer time frame is down, then we wanna look for short trades on the smaller time frames, even though we may not have an entry yet on the larger time frame. If that makes sense, okay? Larry saying, I'm late, uh, which broker charting are you using? This just happens to be Ninja with um, our software studies called the Applied Reality Trading System with uh, indicators like the ALF, PTF, and TLM. Up here, we have our scanner running too, so you can see that running. But what I'm trying to emphasize here, not so much trading system as much as the ability to get a nice view of the market by looking at three time frames of the same market. It will help in your timing. Okay, so Rahish is asking, um, what time frames do you recommend for short-term, medium, and long-term? All right, it depends on when you say, are you a position trader or are you a day trader? So, you know, for example, we, we run a um, day trading room, and in the day trading room, we keep it pretty active. So we have a one minute time frame as our primary time, time frame for the futures market, and that's here. And then we have a 10 second one, and then a five minute. But that's not written in stone. You could have a five minute for your major if you don't want to trade that often during the day. And then you could go five time frames out, so you'd have at least a 25 minute time frame for your long, or maybe a 30. You can go longer. And then you want to go under by at least five too. All right, so usually try to keep the time frames five time frames segregated. And for example, you know, um, if you're using position tra trading charts, that's going to be a whole different thing. Okay, so it depends on what your primary time frame is. Then go five above, and if you can, five below. Great questions. All right, so let me just back up. Um, I'm going to go back to, for a moment, the um, PowerPoint, and I just want to see if everybody kind of understands what, do you understand what fractal symmetry is? Has everybody kind of got a good handle on that before I go back? I think probably it's pretty easy to understand, basically removing the X and Y axis and seeing the same price patterns across different, uh, you know, charts, markets, timeframes. That's pretty easy, right? So when you're designing a trading approach and uh, whether you're writing your own code or you're doing it yourself, one of the things you have to, uh, you wanna keep in mind, I think, is you wanna create your uh, approach to take into account the fact that you wanna focus on things that are basically available as truths of the market on all three timeframes. And of course, that's price, momentum, and volume. So that's uh, when we when we talk about fractal symmetry, that's kind of what we're meaning on that. All right. Well, um, any other questions? I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint, and we'll go ahead and wrap it up because we only got a few minutes left. All right. So give me one second. All right. So I want to make sure, let me just go back here, that everybody has a chance to get uh, this article because in this article, one of the things we really didn't discuss here, um, but it's really important, is risk control. 
And so what we've done here is I want you, if you can, to click on that link in the chat area and download this free article on risk control because in it, I give you the formulas for you to calculate your trade size. And we have it built into something called the trade size calculator and the risk reward calculator. Uh, but these formulas are what you need and they're in the article. So that's something I think that's gonna help you a lot. So that link is in the chat area. All right, so I think, um, thinking I got all the questions here, I think that's pretty much it for today. Uh, if there's nothing else, um, Dave, uh, that's, that's what I got for everybody today and I wanna thank everybody for coming. Great questions.